Hey guys, Bios and Ramos. This Saturday, the Miami Dolphins lost to the Jacksonville Jaguars 18 to 31 in their final preseason matchup, putting them at one and two in the preseason um, and one and one on the road. With that being said, the reason of this game being called off so early, which is the most controversial part of this game, is because of David Davis's concussion. Um, it happened with about eight and a half minutes left in the game, and uh, both teams came together and decided to just call off the remainder of the game. Given as it is, Dolphins were going down the field and uh, more than likely would have gotten a penalty for the situation and been able to advance the ball. It was a third down. Um, but with that being said, there's a man's life at risk, and uh, it was a very scary situation. The The hit was very unclear, and, you know, when you see guys go down in the way he did uh, with concussions, it's very obvious. This one was very hard to, um, you know, kind of see and be like, man, that guy just got knocked out. Um, with that being said, I hope all is well. There is some good news out of this is that uh, since being taken off the field, he's been able to move all of, the, all of his extremities and um, you know has some mobility in those uh, his body parts. So that's some good news and he is conscious, but he still is take, being taken to a medical center to be evaluated and so on. Uh, but definitely hurts to see this happen to players. It's not something you never want to see um, as a fan, as a as spectator in general of this sport it's a very brutal sport and things like this unfortunately happen more often than we notice um well yeah it's sad fall that out of the way uh typically by this point in the video you will be seeing a highlight of some sort even if it's the dolphins losing in the matter that they did um i think they could have had a chance to possibly contest in this game but uh, given all of the circumstances, they're just like, hey, let's just call it off. It's final seed preseason game. I think uh, both teams have had seen enough of what they wanted to see. A lot of the guys who could have made a difference in their outcome of getting on rosters, definitely that definitely sucks for them. But um, I think uh, I think it's the right call. So uh, that's my standpoint on that. Uh, aside from that, the game itself very sloppy from the Dolphin side. It just wasn't. Wasn't looking well defensively, offensively. Um, special teams was all right, but special teams was barely out there because every time Dolphins scored a touchdown, since they were already down by a lot, they wanted to go for two every time. Uh, you only saw a special teams unit out there on kickoff uh, returns and and kickoffs and one punt and two uh, field goal kicks. Uh, aside from that, and then whenever the Jacksonville Jaguars were doing their special teams stuff, they were on there defensively. Either way, um, underwhelming game, uh, just very sloppy, and as though there were only 10 combined penalties, five for each side, it wasn't so much that you saw and you are just like, ah, like, it just, it just wasn't a great game. Um, and then to cap it off, everything that happened with the concussion is very unfortunate. Um, oh. I'm not even going to go over some team stats. Uh, really quick, just uh, 348 total yards for Dolphins, three, uh, 413 for the Jacksonville Jaguars. Uh, there were five penalties for the Dolphins for 33 total yards. Jacksonville had five penalties for 45 total yards. Uh, red zone made per attempt, two for four for the Dolphins, and three for five for the Jacksonville Jaguars. Uh, in terms of the stats, uh, gonna roughly go over a lot of them. Uh, Skyler Thompson went 15 of 24, 135 yards with two interceptions. Very under underwhelming performance. But I can say the same for Tua. Had he been in there longer, probably would have been such a great performance. Uh, four for six, 67 uh, yards. It just, it wasn't the very best um, look for Tua. Like it just, it wasn't good. Uh, CJ Bedford was the Jacksonville Jaguars leading passer, 8 of 10, 134 yards with one touchdown, which was a 75-yard bomb to Tim Jones. Um, and then Trevor Lawrence, 8 of 10, 92 yards. He looked pretty decent. The offense looks good for the Jaguars. Um, leading rusher for the Dolphins was Savon Ahmed, 4 carries, 43 yards. And then uh, Chris Brooks, 6 carries, 33 yards, 2 touchdowns. And uh, I like how he performed tonight. He looked really good. So he's going to be a guy who's going to be – uh, one of those guys that is, you're going to struggle to decide whether or not you want to keep him on the squad. Uh, on top of that, you're going to struggle whether or not if you do, if it's going to be actually on the 53 or if he's going to be a practice squad player. Then you put the risk of uh, him being picked up by another team. So 
it's a scary situation. Uh, let's see what the Dolphins can make of it. Um, on top of that, Jacksonville Jaguars had Travis Etienne, 8 carries, 39 yards, 1 touchdown. And then uh, Tanks Bigsby was right behind them, 6 carries, 37 yards. Um, he's a rookie out of Auburn. Uh, it's one of those guys that, through the draft process, I was very interested in and in seeing possibly what he could bring to the table in any NFL roster. Um, I saw, I was following him very closely coming out of Auburn, so uh, someone that may be in fantasy, you might be interested in picking up, uh, depending on your league or whatever it may be. I think he's going to be a good backup to Etienne, and on top of that, just um, someone that you could probably rely on. I think this Jacksonville Jaguars offense is uh, something that's going to be very nice throughout the season and uh, something that you know will put a lot of points up. Just say that. Um, Miami, Miami's uh, receiving core. River Craycraft, five receptions, fi uh, 52 yards. Uh, Tyreek Hill, one reception, 30 yards. And uh, Miles Gaskin, five receptions, 30 yards. Cedric Wilson, two receptions, 29 yards. Everyone else was under 16. Uh, Jacksonville Jaguars, Tim Jones, like I mentioned, one reception, 74 yards. Seth Williams, five receptions, 50 yards. Calvin Ridley, three receptions, 50 yards. Uh, and he had a 28-yard one that... On the initial play, it was called out. Jaguars challenged it, succeed, successfully challenged it, and it uh, got overturned. Um, tough one. If it was regular season, I feel like they would have, you know, really, like, probably not have called it back. Like, uh, called it. Like, if they would, they would have probably not reversed the call, but uh, I think it was close enough that it could have passed as a, as a completion, but it was very, very close. It was hard to really tell, honestly. Um... Aside from that, let's get into some of the defensive stats. Uh, there were a few fumbles. Uh, Dolphins had one. Uh, luckily, it was recovered by Kendall Lamb. That was a, a high snap over Tua's head. And uh, Tua would die for it. He couldn't grab it, and he kind of, like, elbowed it when he was coming down, like, trying to reach for it. Luckily, Kendall Lamb was able to drop on it. This was Dolphins' first or second drive. Like, I think this was the, the third play of the game for the Dolphins. Um... Jevin Holland was able to recover a fumble that was lost by Tanks Bigsby on the goal line. Huge play. Love to see that from our defense. Uh, Dolphins leading tackler was Andrew Van Kinkle. Six total, three solo, half a sack, and one QB hit. Uh, I'm not going to run through the list here. Um, Ventro Miller for the Jaguars was their leading tackler. Five total, four solo, with one QB hit. Uh, they had two interceptions. Yusir Abdullah got one for five yards returned. And then Eric Hallett the second had one that was a toe drag interception that was called off first. And literally the following drive after the Calvin Ridley play, this play happened. Um, and they were able to challenge it and successfully challenge. And that one was way more of a convincing play. The other one for Ridley was a lot more harder to believe, which the commentators for the Dolphins were saying pretty much vice versa of that. Uh, I don't know, man. I don't know. <laughs> Uh, special teams, uh, Jason Sanders went for, uh, two for two on field goals, didn't kick a single extra point. Uh, Dolphins went for two every time they tried, uh, they ended up scoring. So uh, they had two field goals and two touchdowns. And then uh, for the Jacksonville Jaguars, Brandon McManus had one field goal and uh, two for two on extra points. And then they had another kicker come out, James McCourt, go for two for two on extra points. Uh, Jake Bailey had one punt for 57 yards. Uh, it resulted in a touchback, and then uh, Logan Cook had one punt for 51 total yards. And that pretty much runs through the numbers for this matchup. Dolphins 1-2 on the preseason, 1-1 one -on, on the road. And, um, yeah, in light of everything, final cuts are on Tuesday. And uh, we'll see what happens with this Dolphins roster. I will try to come out with a video beforehand. Um, I will definitely try to make a video in the sense of me estimating who will be on the final 53-man roster and then I can probably list off some practice squad players and then probably within the same video if not two separate videos react to the final 53-man roster and give my evaluations there too as well uh, with that being said this wraps up the preseason we have a week off and then we go into the regular season where we kick it off week one 4 p.m. Eastern against the Los Angeles Chargers and this will be one of the more anticipated matchups. We finally get a like almost fully healthy Miami Dolphins versus a fully healthy Los Angeles Chargers. Both teams have been pitted against each other since 
the draft night in 2020, where uh, it was Tua versus Herbert. Who did the Dolphins pick with their fifth overall pick? Ended up going with Tua. And right after, Chargers went with Justin Herbert. And it's been pretty much a rivalry ever since.